Tori here today with a really special project. I made this project in December and I'm just getting around to posting it now so I hope that that's okay. I just didn't have time to do the voiceover and edit it and everything and get it up while trying to do my December daily so I figured I'll just post it when I have time and to edit and do the voiceover and everything. So I'm going to be working while I do the voiceover and tell you kind of about what I'm creating here. I hope that that is okay. So I decided for my grandma, I wanted to create a really special Christmas present. My grandma, I've talked about her a number of times on my channel. She has Alzheimer's and she's in a care facility here. Recently, I was doing some research on Alzheimer's on the internet and I found this really cool idea. It's called an Alzheimer's memory book or memory box. And it's like an album or a box or a project that you put together for a patient with Alzheimer's that kind of tells their personal story. It shares about the people in their life that are important to them, about their kids and their grandkids, where they are, a little bit about themselves. And it kind of has two really special benefits. The first benefit of an Alzheimer's memory book is that it helps the patient with Alzheimer's. It helps them remember things and it prompts memories for them and over time since short-term memory is typically an issue it can help them continue to remember the things about their life that they're starting to forget so an Alzheimer's memory book is really beneficial for that the second benefit of an Alzheimer's memory book is it helps other people who visit this patient with Alzheimer's because they can sit down with them open up the book together and look and say hey look it's your grandkid or it's your son or it's your daughter and point out things and instead of asking a patient with Alzheimer's questions about their life which they typically don't know the answers to or forget and it can cause a lot of distress that they don't know those things instead you can take a look at the book together and go through it together and I think when I read that online I was just completely amazed and was like I have to make one of these for my grandma absolutely amazing as soon as possible and I think it could be a really great gift to give her for Christmas my grandma is at a point with her Alzheimer's that she doesn't know who I am. Actually, I don't think she's known me for the last few years. Um, she also doesn't know who my mom is. And she does know that she has two sons. However, she can't always remember their names. And typically when we're talking about my dad or when I'm with my grandma, she'll just say, how's himself doing? And whenever she says that, she's referring to my dad, her son, but she just can't necessarily think of his name or remember um, who what, who he is but she knows him and then when she sees my dad she recognizes him and knows that he's her son but she can't always think of his name um, when she sees me and my siblings it's kind of like she knows that she knows us but she doesn't know how she knows us and like I'll give you an example the other day I went to visit her at the care facility she's at and I walked into the room and I was like hi grandma I've come to take you out for lunch and she didn't even look up like she was with a bunch of other ladies she didn't even like acknowledge that I was talking to her like I had to say grandma pat and like go over to her and and like let her know that I was <laughs> like trying to get her attention so I really wanted to make this book and I thought it could be a really great gift to give her and also something that can maybe help her I mean I don't know if it if it will but I wanted to kind of try and make it so as soon as I found this idea on the internet, I did a ton of research. Like, I read a whole bunch of articles about how memory books and memory boxes can actually really help patients with Alzheimer's, about how to create them, what you should put in them. I even posted over on a couple of Facebook groups asking people if anybody had ever made one and if anybody had any advice. And there were a couple of people who, who had made them and had some advice and then there were other people who hadn't necessarily made one but had family members with Alzheimer's who could give advice. And I just... I just kind of gathered all of that up and when I was ready to go I printed off all my photos and sat down and just spent like two or three days working on this project. So 
I am going to be sharing this project in the next few videos and I'm going to hopefully be able to tell you a little bit more about it as I go along and a little bit more about my grandma as we go to. I just wanted to make this quick introduction video to kind of share how I got set up, how, what my organization and thought process was and what I'm using in terms of embellishments and products and things like that. So. I've already kind of told you the organization. What I did was I am going to be using a 6x8 album. This album is a canvas album that I got from Studio Calico a number of years ago and I've just had in my room, haven't gotten to use. And I have tons of 6x8 page protectors which worked really well. So I'm going to use that. I'm also going to be using this collection by Felicity Jane and it's the Emmeline Fel Emmeline Felicity Jane collection and that is it. I am not using anything else in this book, only this collection. And one of the reasons that I'm doing that is through all of the research and all of the discussions on those two comment boards that I received, the majority of people continually said keep it simple. And it's true, with patients with Alzheimer's they get distracted really easily. So the more simple that you can create the project, the better it will be. So I had ordered two sets of this paper collection. And so I had lots of embellishments and lots of paper and that I used almost the whole entire collection. And I will do a Killikit video when I'm all done showing you what I have left of the collection and doing like a walkthrough and everything. So the first step for me was to put the page protectors in and I had an idea of what I wanted the order of the project to be. I knew that I wanted to start the project off with a title page and then a couple pages just about her, about what her likes are, who she is, where she was born, things like that. Then I would talk about her husband, Ross, my grandpa, who died a couple of years ago. Then I would have some pages about her two sons and their wives and then her grandchildren. She only had three grandchildren, so the book actually isn't that big because it's not that many people, but it worked really well. And then the last couple of pages, so then there would be a page about her grandkids. After her grandkids, I would have a picture, a couple pages about her best friend Marina or my Aunt Marina. And then the last page would just be like where she is now. And I wanted to keep it super simple and very to the point, kind of sharing her story of where she was born to where she is now. And I felt like it would be like a really great way for her to kind of look at that and understand who she is. So first thing I did was I put the page protectors in and put them in order of where I knew I wanted things to go. So I had printed off all of these photos and I knew which photos were going to go where and I put a little sticky note on each page protector like on here I'm going to talk about Uncle Jeff, here I'm going to talk about my dad, here I'm going to talk about my mom, etc. all throughout the book and I decided each person in her life my dad, my mom, myself, my sister, my brother, my aunts and uncles would get a two-page spread. If you were doing a family that was a lot bigger, you might want to do only a one-page spread or only like a one-page for all the grandkids or something like that. But it worked for the album size and the project that I was creating. So I stuck those sticky notes. Now, then what I did was I took all of the papers in the two paper packs from the Felicity Jane Emmeline kit and I cut them all down. I cut all of the pattern papers down to 6x8 so it would have 6x8 full sheet papers and then the rest of the paper I cut down to 3x4 and 4x6 cards so that I could use them in those. And I decided that I wanted to have one 6x8 page for each person and then kind of like a project life page kind of spread on the other side. So you can kind of see as I flip through there I just kind of layered those papers in and added photos along the way and kept those sticky notes just so that when I was working on it I would know where everything went. And this is like such an easy project to replicate. It did take me a few days and a number of hours to work on it but because I was keeping it simple and I had pre-decided in my mind that I wanted each family member to have a two-page spread, I wanted one six by eight spread and then one kind of project life type spread, it, it was actually quite easy for me to, 
to lay this all out there and put it in there. There's only one time that I kind of veered from that. I had a couple of photos of my siblings and I, so I wanted to make kind of a two-page spread that said, like, you have three grandchildren and their names are, and then kind of go into, like, here's Josh, here's Courtney, here's Tori. So um, that's kind of what I did, and I just picked the papers to back the photos of each person that I thought would be the best fit um, with the photo in question. And I separated out all of the 3x4 cards and all of the 4x6 cards. And what I'm doing is I'm just cutting, I had a bunch of strips of paper that were the leftovers that I had cut off of the 6x8 papers. And what I did was I just cut those all down to 4x6 or 3x4. And I am literally going to go through the book and slip all of those cards, all of those papers into the pockets and fill every single pocket, every single page protector with cards and papers and photos. And then later in the follow-up videos, what I'm going to do is add the journaling and, the, and stick down the photos and then any embellishments that I might want to add. And it, it was actually like a really fun process. I feel like this same kind of process could work for any type of album, whether you were making a memory book like I am or whether you were, say, doing a trip or a vacation. If you kind of had like an idea in your mind of what you wanted the project to be, it would make it a lot more easy for you to do this project if you kind of followed this kind of style where you sit all the page protectors, put all the papers, put all the cards. And the best thing about using only one entire collection for the whole entire project is I know everything will coordinate, I know it will all go together, I know the whole book will look cohesive and look really pretty, which those kind of things don't necessarily matter to my grandma who has Alzheimer's, but they matter to me as the person making the book. I want the book to look cohesive. And because I'm only using one paper collection for the whole entire thing, it made decision making so easy. Like I can't even tell you how easy decision making for the embellishing and for the papers was because instead of having like a ton of supplies to use, I was just using one scrapbook kit from Felicity Jane, which I had multiple papers of for the whole entire project. And I could just like put the papers in, put the cards in, put the photos in, put the embellishments and everything coordinated. I didn't have a lot of supplies to go through or anything. I could just kind of quickly do it and it worked really well. So I would definitely do this kind of mini book or gift or project again in the future. I've actually decided I'm going to do a mini book a month kind of thing during 2017. That's kind of the hope or a separate album each month. I might do a few more projects than that, but who knows, um, during 2017. And this is kind of like how I think I'll get a lot of it done is by using one kit or one collection to make a whole project. I think it can be really fun to use other things from your stash, and I do that a lot, but sometimes it's just nice to just use one collection in the whole entire project. Well, I'm gonna wrap that up, but I'm also gonna wrap up this video for part one in my grandma's Alzheimer's memory book. If you have any questions, leave them below. I'd love to hear from you. You wanna check out photos and stuff? Head over to my blog, ToriBissell.com. See you in the next video.